This is the Spaghetti Bridge presentation for Group 8. After considering the fact that our bridge wouldn't need to function as a traditional bridge and have loads travelling from one end to another, and instead would only have force at the centre of the bridge where the te testing apparatus would be attached, we realised that a tight arch design, where all members were modified to support the centre, was the best idea that we had. We then started to do some drawings of what the bridge would look like, but we quickly came to an issue where we had no idea how to attach the hook from the testing machine to the bridge. Once we had access to the machine, we took all measurements needed to reassess our drawings. By having to attach a plate to our bridge, we could not have only one centre point where all forces would focus, so we decided to cut our drawing in half and add enough space for the plate. We would now have to focus two points instead of one, one on each side of the plate. Another reason we chose this design is that we didn't want to do anything classic or standard. We knew we'd spend quite some time on this project, so we decided to do something a bit more spectacular, but was still feasible for us. After the trial bridge, we also decided to go further and add tensile members across the centre, inside the bridge, that cross each other, further increasing the spectacle. The side upright sections of the bridge, which were on the left, were one of the more difficult parts to assemble. They were constructed by first drawing a template onto a sheet of baking paper so that both sides would be identical in length to the same measurements and, more importantly, at the same angles. Once the template was drawn, the spaghetti was laid out, glued and assembled flat. This was done four times, twice for each side of the bridge. After witnessing how the practice bridge was broken on the bottom lateral supports on the bridge, we decided to make these ones stronger and have four instead of the original two. We started by gluing three spaghetti together flat and then adding another two on top, making sure that the joins weren't all in the same place and that they overlapped. Then one more spaghetti was placed on top of those two and then another two, finally, were added either side. With the bottoms complete, the side sections were attached to the bottoms. We did this by laying the bottom out flat, attaching the sides to it and then taping those sides at a 90 degree angle to a coke bottle to hold it while it dried. An additional four pieces were made to the same template as the sides. These would make up the cross sections, which you can see on the right, that would go from two of the bottom sections that laid in the centre across to the tops of the sides. With the sides attached to the bottom members and the centre to top cross sections built, it was time to assemble the bridge, which ended up being one of the more difficult parts. The assembled side sections were held upright and the bottom sections had timber between them to keep the spacing right. The cross sections that were constructed earlier were then glued to either of the two centre horizontal members and also attached at the end of the side members. On the test bridge, we used perpendicular cross sections to keep all the compression parts together. For the final bridge, we decided to keep those perpendicular sections only to the top and bottom to hold everything together while building the bridge, and then add angled cross sections to help transfer the load into the compression members later. Unfortunately, we couldn't add as many cross sections as we wanted since we were already getting close to 200 grams. Finally, once everything was put together, we made sure to reinforce our connections by adding superglue. We also cut all excess spaghetti that was hanging out of the joins to ensure that it came under 200 grams. The final total weight was 196 grams. Our final bridge took us a total of 15 hours of work to assemble. We also tested how much we could bend the spaghetti before failure. We glued a bunch of them at both ends and another bunch glued several points down the middle. We found out that the glue reduced the tensile capacity but it makes them much stronger which would be suitable for the bottom cords. An issue we had with our trial bridge was that some glue spread around some of the tensile members which then meant that they weren't able to bend as much and snapped a lot easier. Before building our first bridge, we did some small scale tests to have a better idea of the spaghetti's strength. We applied a compressive stress on different sized sections to better understand the resistance of the small members. With what we learned from this, we then decided to keep the compressive members as short as possible to increase their strength. To hold these compressive members in place, we first made the angle parts and then squeezed the compressive parts in between. The idea behind this was that when applying a load on our bridge, it would bend the bottom cord by pulling all the tensile members to the middle. This would then lift the far ends of the bottom cord and put compression all around the arc. We then push the compressive part against themselves and hold the tensile parts in between. To test how our idea would perform and find the best method for construction, we assembled and tested a trial bridge. The trial bridge weighed 77 grams and held 4 kilos before breaking, meaning that the ratio we achieved with this trial was 52. In testing the trial, we learned of a flaw with the design. The bridge broke on one of the two bottom supports and was a little bit too short, not fully resting on the testing apparatus. The bridge also leaned a little bit during testing, meaning the construction was a little uneven, and as a result, one side of the bridge was taking more force than the other. The obvious takeaway from this test was to greatly increase the support at the bottom of the bridge where it broke, and to make it longer so that it tested fully on the apparatus and also to be much more careful and precise with construction to try and avoid it tilting to one side again. This is our evaluated design which we came up with after testing the trial bridge. We made the 
width between the middle significantly wider so that the testing apparatus could fit more comfortably between the two upright members. We also increased the overall size of the bridge to make it fit better on the testing apparatus, fully resting on both sides. You can see here how we applied what we learnt from the trial bridge with the final product at the back significantly longer than the trial bridge as well as taller and the bottoms having been significantly reinforced. In the end, our bridge weighed 196 grams and withstood a weight of 11 kilograms before breaking, meaning it held 56 times its own weight before failing. Our final bridge fell, fell very short of what we originally aimed for. We tried our best to address the failings of the practice bridge and increase support along the bottom. In the final bridge, we had more than quadruple the number of spaghetti making up the bottom members of the bridge, which did increase the amount of force that it was able to take before breaking, but it wasn't nearly as much as we hoped it would, showing that maybe we didn't address the issue as well as we thought we had. The final bridge weighed 196 grams, where our test bridge weighed only 77 grams. Since we were being judged based on the ratio of weight carried versus the weight of the bridge, our major reinforcements might not have been worth the weight that they added to the bridge, as they so heavily affected the ratio of weight held versus weight of the bridge. From our final bridge to our trial bridge, we only have a ratio difference of 4 for a 119 gram difference in weight, and an additional 8 hours of work on the construction.